Martin. Welcome to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week update here. I am Adolfo Fronda, episode number 51, here with my compadre. Greg Valoria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, man. Like, hey, 51, it's another milestone. Yeah, we man. We made another one, I guess that's lots what we're saying. Lots and lots of lots to talk about here, man. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I'm so I'm still uh, recovering from the Maker Fair. Yeah, we're That's what we're going to talk a lot about this week. Yeah. Yes, yes, we're <laughs> makerized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, let's get into the first story. Uh, what about the Xbox One? I, I guess it made a splash this yes, last week, huh? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, today, actually, it was announced. Well, as of this recording, I should say, uh, which is the 21st. Um, yeah, Xbox One just came right out here. Slot lo- loading. Let's get right into the detail. Slot loading Blu-ray drive, and it only works in horizontal horizontal orientation microsoft and amd partner to make the custom 40 nanometer chip with an eight core cpu and gpu that powers the one it has eight gigabytes of ram and a 500 gigabyte hard drive usb 3.0 and 802.11 n wi-fi it features an hdmi pass-through so the console can sit between your cable or satellite operator set top box and your tv you can tune channels with your voice Use a Google, I mean, use a TV guide directly from the Xbox (laughs) and multitask between gaming, TV, Skype, Internet Explorer, and more. Uh, The Kinect sensor has been improved, which I'm very excited about. No backwards compatibility. uh, Bad news for you guys with old games. And they also announced a Spielberg-produced partnership uh, to create a TV show out of Halo. So um, a lot of stuff here. The really, you know, some of the things, I just blurbed through the, the specs and the details real quick. I ripped right through them. And, of course, they made some other partnerships with, like, NBA and other stuff for gaming stuff, NFL, uh, UFC. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that's with EA or something like that with some uh, gaming stuff, too. But really the big news is, uh, to me anyways, is, is that they're this sort of uh, conduit now between the television and your actual um, cable box, right? So it actually right. works between right. the two. Um but we'll see. You know, I know with a Roku and Apple TV that there's always um, a, a bit of a hump to get someone to actually install yet another device uh, in their media center. So I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Uh, as far as like biohacking and research, um, the new Connect sensor looks very uh, interesting. Uh, much improved. A lot of uh, uh, the cameras, much better. All the skeletal tracking and stuff like that looks uh, amazing. And uh, yes, and yes, it's uh, voice activated too. So there's something like Xbox on or something like that, and it turns on Xbox TV, uh, watch TV, and it turns on your tape, your television, and, and it's all voice activated and Skype to HD calls, you know, and stuff like that. A lot of voice activation stuff happening. So exciting. Well, I can't wait to see it in practice. But uh, a ton of news also with Maker Fair, brother. So let's get into it. Uh, Greg, uh, augmented reality, uh, technical illusions and Maker AR. Tell us, what is this about? Yeah. Well, you know, I think that uh, all it's all about interactive nowadays, right, at the Maker Fair. They, they have that one uh, called the Fiesta, of, uh, whatever, the Fiesta Room. <laughs> I yeah, wouldn't that's call right. It room, but yeah, that's all dedicated to... Um, immersive experiences or experiential stuff and so i i toured around there and i came across a startup which i i uh, posted on uh, nerdsoccer.com which is called uh, technical illusions uh, they've come up with an interesting reflective type of ar which they have a little headset that they they made and, and get this the price point is like 200 dollars for this for this headset wow uh, i i mean i mean i mean that's incredible but what's that even is. more incredible the the engine on top of that is open source. Yeah. So now now you have access to the API, but I don't think you have access to the back end, but still wow. I, I mean for game gamers that's right. um I saw that's immediate entry into the AR space which has been very difficult. It costs at least a thousand bucks for the for the standard glasses totally. at this point. Yeah. So, right? And so um, I'm kind of excited. They, they're talking. They're talking about merging with some of the big game engines out there. So um, you wow. know, take a take a look at these guys. Technical Illusions. Um, they're not completely released yet, but they made their they made their initial splash into the market um, at at Maker Faire 2013. And then the other one I picked up uh, at the same at the same time is another. It was just a hacked AR. Uh, 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 you know, a group of people uh, called Maker AR, and what they wow. did is they they put together a uh, a uh, AR demonstration using soldering. So basically, you get a virtual solder, virtual Whoa. soldering gun, oh, cool. and actually 
you can on the iPad you can mm-hmm. actually uh, uh, if it has the vibration uh, elements in it you can see it oh, vibrate wow. as you're soldering. That's the so thing. neat. And, and, yeah, and I think the demonstration was is that now anyone can start to do some of these things, right? Yeah. It isn't in the hands of some of these bigger, bigger bodies which want to force you down a certain path. Cool. Yeah, you know, these people said they lost sleep for the last four weeks, but they they pulled it together and and they did actually. And so catch our catch our my article or my video on um, nerdsoccer dot com was just posted today, the the twenty uh, first of May and. Uh, you know, tell me, guys, how what do you think about it? You know, Very cool. it, will 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 this actually uh, democratize uh, the AR space now? So anyway, Kick okay, ass. well let's go on. I, I noticed that you were tweeting and you released a lot of um, video on the maker and and what's this uh, next uh, these next uh, Adolfo picks of <laughs> Maker Fair 2013? Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of uh, a lot of stuff I have in the queue uh, with video wise and and people that we talk to. Uh, from my perspective, I know Greg had a whole different perspective. We were trying to divide and conquer at Maker uh, this year. And thanks to O'Reilly also, we had such a wonderful time and met incredible people uh, as we do every year. So, yeah, uh, let's start with focus. Um, a lot of the people, uh, biohackers that I know in the, in the circles that I run in, have been uh, this is one of the names of one of these headsets uh, companies that came up. And by chance, they were at Maker Faire. Uh, they had just got back from Shenzhen, China. And p- forgive me if I'm butchering that that name, um, where they'd been living there for three months. Uh, there were some English guys, a couple of English guys um, from London, who uh, were there actually getting this device built. So what Focus is, is FOC.US, by the way. Uh, they claim to overclock your brain using transcranial direct current stimulation, TDCS, as some of you Whoa. biohackers know, to increase the plasticity of your brain, make your synapses fire faster. So uh, they're targeting this towards the gamer, but uh, a lot of those biohackers out there know that um, nice. if you want to tweak your, uh, you know, tweak your your focus and things like that throughout the day, or different times, you can play around with the current of this type of thing. And what it does is it like jumps around your prefrontal cortex. And if you go to nerdstalker.com, you'll see a really weird video of me wearing this thing, like staring into the camera, kind of weird because I am actually feeling the current go across the front of my brain and oh back and it's a sensation oh that i that i have not felt in quite some time um so anyways the the headset typically these type of headsets go anywhere from like uh you know in the thousand dollar range to at the very low end to like the four hundred dollar range um mm-hmm. right the base bottom they're selling theirs for 249 uh they kick-started bootstrapped it and uh there's a there's a line now to to to, you got to get in line and sign up, and, and you'll get yours uh, shipped, I think, by the end of the month or by the end of June or something like that. Uh, so nice, check them out, FOC.us. Nice. Very interesting uh, work. Also, there was uh, I met a wonderful young lady, um, a senior in high school, and at theonerobot.com. And what they had built is she made this in her freshman year of high school that she was demoing. It was a levitating uh, magnetic vehicle uh, made out of Legos and, and a lot of different stuff. And you'll see oh, the nice. video of her uh, talking about super smart uh young lady and uh violet uh i forget her last name forgive me right now and um it goes back and forth uh they plan on making another one there's a small team of them uh robotics team high school super smart uh kids and they are kicking butt and taking names so check it out uh the one robot.com and go to nerdstalker.com for that awesome video so the next company i talked to was a company called spark core and what i love about mm. spark core mm. is uh the previous year at uh at a uh, maker fair i talked to a company called electric imp and what they did is made a little chip mm. that also had a uh, right. sort of wi-fi embedded within the chip so you can wi-fi enable any device um, the thing about Electric Imp is uh, some of their stuff is a bit proprietary, not totally, but um, some of it is. Uh, the thing about SparkCore is they do something similar, but it's completely open source. Um, so here is a little uh, chip here from the SparkCore company. It's not quite focusing, but uh, they gave me this. So yeah, so this is uh, SparkCore. This is their card, this little chip here. So embedded oh, nice. Wi-Fi type of uh, technology within chips so you can Wi-Fi enable uh, anything, basically. Check them out at bit.ly forward slash SparkCore. Cool technology. Uh, and then also there was a company called, um, if you can, a startup called The Fen. And so what, <laughs> what The Fen yeah. is, it's sort of a, a children's story slash toy slash a robot um, so you can check them out at thefen.com. So this is the Fen, this little guy down here, this little blue alien type of thing. And the story with the Fen is that uh, it's kind of a children's story thing, but it's also sort of this like little robotic device, uh, kind of about actually that big, actually. And um, 
It's a little alien and furry, super cute, and its eyes are your iPhone. So you put your iPhone oh, right nice. in the slot here of this thing, and it's looking around. These two big eyes, it looks around, and it tracks you with the iPhone camera. So if you wow. move around or your kid moves around or you have a little yellow ball that it comes with it, it'll track it and chase it around and uh, show emotions. And it's a lot of fun, super clever, um, great for kids. Check them out at thefen.com. Well, um, like, kind of like a transmedia effect with a story around it and a yeah, real thing. Wow, yeah, that's totally. Like cool. a, and uh, really great illustrations, as you could see from the card. Uh, they hired like a real, a very good designer, and uh, so you know, really beautiful, really neat um, sort of nice, collective nice. Uh, experience. And okay, the last one that I want to talk about here uh, until Greg gets into his story is. Uh, a company called Miciel, M I C I L E, and what Miciel is is sort of um, it's uh, essentially Perl uh, language. It's mobile computing unleash is what they claim, and it, what allows what these guys allow you to do this in Narash, the CEO of Miciel. Um, you can start creating your own apps with a kit that includes a pre-tested and fully functioning 7-inch tablet, SD card with the Miseal software development suite, full documentation to get you started. So uh, what they do is they give you all these sort of like um, canned, ready-to-go sort of um, objects, if you will, for developers. Okay. And you can create these um, multi-platform um, free OS type of uh, applications and stuff like that. And then you can effectively, as a, a, sale, a developer, uh, resell it to people. So... Um, Let's say if there's a, a doctor's office that needs a particular custom application, uh, you can do this. Missile takes a little cut out of it, but it's more developer-y. Check them out. It's interesting. Uh, it's Python, you know, open source. They created their wow. own OS, basically, for these Chinese type of tablets. M-I-C-I-L-E dot com. Uh, check them out. All right, Greg, enough about me. So Arduino, let's get into it. Wow, at Maker Fair, I, I, I call it the Arduino effect. Yeah. Now, I, this, this, you know, Arduino I, I, Fair. I don't know what else to call it. I don't know what to call it, but you know, I, I was talking to many people, and the one thing that came across, and as I was talking to one individual from the Homebrew uh, Robotics Club, mm -hmm. was really the, the, the Arduino now to everyone um, uh, that could make anything like robots is really equivalent to he was saying to the Gutenberg press. I mean, mm. it was just incredible. So mm -hmm. I'm calling it the Arduino effect. You know, before the uh, the press came around, as, as you know, it was in the hands of the elite, uh, the books and the printing of books and stuff like that. And so now that this uh, pre uh, press was created like the Gutenberg press, anyone could do it. Well, you know, the Gutenberg press was equivalent to what they were saying, uh, Atmel's creation of, or not creation, but, you know, with Arduino.org and, and Atmel, you know, they do that. But other companies are now starting to jump on the bandwagon. I saw a lot more bigger companies this year at Maker Faire, like TI. TI has yeah. their own equivalent now to the Arduino. And now uh, TI, you know, you may not know it, but you may be driving with a lot of TI microcontrollers in your car. Yeah. And they're they're hooked into Ford and a couple of other people. Mm -hmm. So so right. they, they recognize the value of uh, turning this into a gold mine. Yeah. And um, – like I said, there was a lot of bigger people out there, but I think the Arduino effect is really catching on where, you know, high school people, as, as you kind of uh, mm -hmm. alluded to, to, to anybody around the world can now do that. I saw even a lot of foreign, more foreign companies doing uh, Arduino uh, add-on products mm -hmm. uh, from China and Japan. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I agree. You know, it doesn't so. it seem like this year, too, there was an... In uh, you know, as you mentioned, they sort of took everything to the next level. Arduino, whether it was Arduino, a lot more people like working with Arduino or making sort of like mods of Arduino of some sort. Or there was, um, you know, a ton of 3D printers, um, laser cutting type of solutions, uh, larger name companies. As you mentioned, Ford was there. I know Chevy was there. Um, Intel, Google. I mean, there was... You know, everyone was there. There was a bigger urban farming. There was a whole area just for urban farming, a whole, right, a whole right, area right. there. It seemed like they took everything to the next level. It seemed like Arduino is even just growing like weeds right now. Let's let's move into uh, Blockly, Google, Crazy Monkeys, Ninja Standing Desk, <laughs> Delta Water. Yeah. I, I, what are you talking about, yeah, man? Yeah, so, okay, so more of uh, what's coming up for you on NerdStalker here. Uh, other great companies I want to talk to. I just mentioned uh, that I talked to, actually, at Maker Fair. Uh, one of the companies that I mentioned a little bit earlier was Google, right? So it was actually Google Education that was there. What they did is they mm -hmm. were uh, demoing a uh, web application that they created for individuals to learn how to program, and it's called Blockly. Um, it's 
let's see, it's uh, B-L-O-C-K-L-Y. Uh, so Google that and you will see uh, what Blockly is. Blockly essentially teaches you how to program via objects, right? So little kind of puzzle pieces looking things where you drag and drop and you stick them together. And we've seen these type of things before. Uh, but it was really fun, really neat, super intuitive, just to learn the concepts of, uh, of programming. Very simple, great for kids, great for adults, actually, too. Um, you know, maybe something like a 10-year-old uh, and up or 12-year-old and up kind of thing. Um, and also what it, in, within the browser itself, it allows you to actually look at the source code also if you want to. So you can take it slowly to these next levels. And it's, it's just a fantastic sort of introductory way into programming. So um, big ups to Google for uh, not only being at, uh, at uh, Maker Faire, but also um, you know, representing there and, and providing us with Blockly, which uh, looks very cool. So Crazy, nice. Mon Crazy Monkeys was really neat. Uh, Crazy Monkeys, there was this guy <laughs> standing in this booth with like a safari hat on and uh, with his, I believe it was uh, like an 11-year-old son or something like that. And it's a, a father-son team. Um, they had just gotten together and created this game, uh, iPad game on iPad. Um, I think they're going to port it to Android as well, make it universal um, via Bay Rocket. Um, and they, it was just a neat uh, exercise in, uh, in a father-son sort of uh, exercise in creating an application for a tablet and for iOS. And it's actually a functioning game that works, and it's a, you know, a monkey-themed type of game. You can shoot bananas at the other monkeys or whatever, barrels coming, and it's a lot of fun. It was really neat to see, really inspiring to hear their experience and how difficult actually it was um, to create this application with like an 11 year old boy whose attention span may not be the longest, biggest thing in the world. Right. So it was uh, oh my God. tough oh for a dad. My God. Uh, another really cool company that, that I met was a uh, Ninja, Ninja standing desk. Uh, so what Ninja standing desk is, is this, what is so great about this thing. And I know this card doesn't quite do it justice is you can just nail a couple this. These are straps and like, sort of like, um, uh, you know, if clipboard, you know what a clipboard is made of, uh, is that would hold your laptops, right? So these straps oh, with Velcro, yeah. and you can nail it into the wall, or you can hang it over a door, and it's a fully functioning uh, standing uh, desk. Very cool. Uh, we have a re review unit, unit that we are going to uh, test out, and I'll let you guys know, uh, you know, if it if it really indeed works. I I saw it at Maker, and it, it looked fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to that one a lot. Wow, um, what a space saver, huh? Yeah, totally. In San Francisco, as I always say, uh, it is at a premium. And another really cool company that was there, oddly enough, was uh, Delta. So, no, not Delta Airlines. Delta, you know, the faucet maker and water oh, type yeah, of yeah, company. Yeah, I saw them, yeah. And What's they were showing this there? really neat uh, technology um, where, uh, you know, some of the Delta swag... Uh, where you see the shower on the one side over there, and what it does, it uses very little water, but it gives you the effect and the feeling of a lot of water. So what they're doing is they're using this sort of side-to-side -side type of technology that they've uh, created um, that uh, I believe it's called H2O Connect or something kinetic. Um, and what it does is it, like, it makes the water go through the side-to-side -side action in the little beads in the water that come out in these beads tend to go in these waves side to side uh you got to see the video totally funny doing yeah that. me doing that is sort of ridiculous <laughs> but I, I have this vivid image in my head that i'm sure i'm articulating perfectly for everyone right now so anyways oh check them out of all the of all the companies that were there delta go figure right and i was like enamored with their technology delta faucet.com it's delta faucet.com where you can get more information on that okay. big news that came out well, on the uh, other side outside of maker yahoo tell us more yeah, well, Yahoo and Tumblr, a lot, a 1.1 billion acquisition. But you yeah. know, I think, you know, it's a, it's a signal that um, high school dropout. Their cash, their cash, and the cash reserves are going down on that Yahoo. But Yahoo is a lot of cash, and and you saw it by all the all the acquisitions they did in just the last six months to since October yeah. last year, right? Yeah. Since Marissa has taken over, um, you know, I. I I think it's good for the market. You know, I think what what I read was was really interesting that one one person brought up is that Yahoo is not um, OS specific, which yeah. is interesting. You think about that, right? Mm -hmm. They're agnostic, mm -hmm. so so they could bring a lot of applications to a general population of things, which I I I I just keep on going. Yahoo, let's see how you do. Yeah, let's get into the speed so round. Let's move. Speed round. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. All right. Let's so go, first dude. up, man. Yeah. Uh, Utah wants to tax powered power consumed by the NSA's massive illegal data processing facility. Thank you to Corey Doctorow and Boing Boing for this very interesting story. So um, remember the gigantic data center that the NSA is building in Utah to order in order to illegally process the electronic communications of the whole world? Well, it turns out that the state of Utah plans on taxing the titanic amounts of electricity it will consume at 6%, <laughs> and the NSA is pissed. Uh, quote, we are are quite concerned this is from the nsa we are quite concerned about this harvey davis of the nsa director of installations and logistics wrote in a recent uh, email in a follow-up email davis sent 31 minutes later he explained the long and short of it is long-term stability of the utility rates was a major factor in utah being selected as our site for our 1.5 billion dollar construction at camp williams <laughs> Um, so yeah, needless to say, I think the NSA is a little bummed out with what they thought would be a friendly situation from Utah and Utah says, Hey man, power goes up. You pay more. Right. Hey, you know, it, it, they're not going to move that anytime soon. I don't think so. Um, I think, uh, Utah's in the driver's seat on that one. What Yikes. do you think? Yeah, I think it's a speed round. <laughs> speed round. <laughs> well, it's a little song. Yeah, this came from one of my, uh, uh, followers, it, it it goes into a maker category. It's oh, cool. the ethics of 3D printers and guns ah. they produce, right? I mean, that was a big thing a few few weeks ago, right? Maybe yeah. even two, three weeks ago. And, and I, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people could do with a lot of information on the internet, do a lot of things. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't. You know, I think just check out that. Um, Check out that article and then, you know, uh, tweet us or tell us what you guys think. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of wanted to just break it out there. I don't have a, a total opinion on that, yeah. but, uh, you know, the, the the ability to make almost anything is 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 what the democratization of, 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 of manufacturing is. And that's really what uh, President Obama wants to do is really uh, make 3D uh, manufacturing uh, part of the core manufacturing um, uh, of the U.S. Uh, of the U.S. now. So, yeah. Uh, but along goes with that is that anyone could do it. Anyone yeah. could do it. So um, I don't know. Um, check that article out. Uh, it came from Life for Herald and on Twitter, one of my followers. But I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, when you talk about crowdfunding through Indiegogo and the ability to get cash to do some of these things, get buy 3D printing equipment yeah. and do all that. That's uh, great. You know. It's good, but uh, you know some of these things like uh, making guns could be part yeah, of it. Yeah, hey, the bad know? comes with the good, you know. Uh, always and yeah. everything. It's just unfortunate when people jump all the way to the to the negative conclusion, like uh, gaming is responsible for, you know, death yeah, and and then going to that type of deep end. Yeah. Well, and I just hope the government doesn't overreact on this one. That that's what my yeah yeah legislation. Is no, please no. What's next there? <laughs> All right, uh, eighteen-year-old's invention can recharge a cell phone in thirty seconds. What? So yeah, what? Um, Intel. Uh, uh, a teenager from Saratoga, California, took home one of the top prizes at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair late last week after showing off her invention, which can fully charge a cell phone in thirty seconds or less. Esha Carr was given, and forgive me if I butchered her name, given the Intel Foundation Young Scientist Award and a $50,000 prize for being runner-up in the competition, which was won by a 19-year-old boy who unveiled a new spin off, a new spin on self-driving car technology. Car's battery, KR's battery technology requires a new component to be installed inside the phone battery itself, and Intel notes that it also has potential application for car batteries. So uh, very oh exciting God. stuff. You know, there's really amazing innovation going on in battery technology right now. I can't wait to see more. Speed Speed round. Round. Speed round. Speed well, next, uh, this is uh, from a friend of SF New Tech, David Spark, you know, you know for the Spark hey, Minute. Um, I follow him. Hey, Dave. Um, he, he got a great article on the Hacking Media Production Podcast, which talks about Uber Gizmo and how they, uh, how they do do a hundred blog posts in one day, yeah. uh, you know, and they just show up. I think they, they were at they they were at some of the, th the places we were at, mm -hmm. and they were just they were just amazing how this machine of blog posts just kind of cranks away at Uber Gizmo. Wow. So check that out. I think it's a uh, hundred blog posts a day, and they they tell you some of the secrets how they do it, and you know, 
draft, and it isn't just throw uh, 10,000 people at it either. That's right. So, That's right. Yeah, some interesting tools that I want you guys to look at in uh, David Sparks' uh, article there, um, uh, VidArc. So, anyway, cool. let's go to uh, tips of the week, man. It's tip time. Uh, what do you have? Tip time. Tip time. Tip time. All right. My tip of the week is a um, iOS application uh, called Instant Heart Rate. Um, so I'd like to thank the uh, Heart Rate Monitor by Azumio. It's a free application, iOS uh, application by a company nice. called Azumio. So look them up, Instant uh, Heart Rate. And okay. what it does, it allows you to, you know, uh, put your finger on your your camera and your light. And I, sure. I'm sure there's an Android equivalent to this. This one just happens to be iOS. Uh, who knows? They might make an iOS uh, Android version too. Um, <clears throat> and what Heart Rate does is it'll... You'll see in a second here. Boom. You go like that. You put this on here. And a sort of, you see what's happening here. It's looking for my heart rate. I'm not doing the greatest job of it because my finger's not on there. It's looking for it. It gets the number eventually. It takes some time to get there. And then there we go. So you'll see the number are. is really? getting there. It's getting there. I'm, I'm terribly oh, you've been working out. calm person here. And uh, anyways, what is it? Oh, oh, 106. I'm losing my mind here. Okay. So what it does eventually well, is getting that excited about the application. You'll get, friends. You'll get a, you know, a lineup of the numbers for particular times of day. You can tag it for like, you know, breakfast, after lunch, afternoon, post exercise, whatever you want, and aggregate of time. Then you can see how it's trending. Really fun stuff, and it's free. So uh, check them out. It's a uh, instant heart rate uh, by oh, Zumio. Holy cow! Free. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Greg, your tip. What well, let's it? move on. I, I think we talked about this earlier, but, uh, you know, guys, check out the new Flickr. <laughs> it yeah, is yeah. really freaking incredible. I, yeah, I, I just don't know what else to say. But but I, I think, you know, I went on there, and it's just like the pictures just come out of you. It's it, it's definitely more vibrant for some reason, and I think is in the, in the color choices they use on the UI mm-hmm. to kind of give it good contrast. But it is freaking incredible, guys. Yeah. Go check it out. I've been a Flickr user for many years. Same. And I just – I thought of it as just a Dropbox, quite frankly, you know, just to put my pictures. But now they've created this whole new user interface that's made it more than just this this Dropbox for pictures, quite frankly. Um, and, and, yeah, check it out. If you don't have a Flickr account, just use your Yahoo account, which I think most people still have. Yeah. Just use your Yahoo account, sign in there, and you'll get Flickr, man. You get a I terabyte mean, free. Incredible. <clears throat> oh, yeah, and a terabyte. Yeah, can for you free. Imagine? What can you do with a terabyte? Yeah, you almost don't uh, need yeah, a paid account free. anymore. That's 50,000 pictures or, yeah. or more. I'm sorry, yeah. 500,000 or something? Yeah, that's it, a ton. And you could understand where Yahoo's going there. They want to build it. You know, Flickr has had a, a really good, loyal, professional data uh, user base, actually, yeah. um, where a lot of their paid accounts are coming from professional photographers, stuff like that, yeah. um, artists. Aggressive. And, uh, and, and, you know, let's face it, the, the Creative Commons that they use there to give it attributions, uh, licensing attributions, really kind of, I believe, helps the, that type of community. So I think that's why they've been loyal. All so, right, man. So events anyway, coming up, bro. Uh, What's happening? SF New Tech. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about SF New Tech. Oh, well, the first SF New Tech coming up on the 29th, coming up this Wednesday, um, they've assembled uh, some of the top experts on the online security uh, who will show their experiences. So a very special event. you got Joe Sullivan, uh, CSO, and Chief Security Officer of Facebook. you got Michael Coates from the Director of Security Assurance at Mozilla. Um, we got the CEO, founder, Imperium. Um, in Permium, uh, you got the, uh, the U.S. the guy from the U.S. Department of uh, Homeland Security and Cybersecurity Communications. He'll be on that. You got Dan Good Gooden, uh, the IT security editor at RS Technica. Anyway, um, and uh, check him out. We'll be at uh, 119 Utah Street, the Mighty Nightclub. Uh, the doors open at 5:30, and uh, uh, check it out for a great event. We'll be streaming that one live as well. And then on the 5th, we got uh, SF New Tech presents the best of the French tech tour again uh, from uh, uh, software as a service to enterprise to startup tools. So uh, check those out. And awesome. then the next day, Thursday, the 6th of June, we got uh, Belgian Tech Pitch Night. And, and guess what? It's free. So. You know, just sign up, go, and you, hey, you know, you got everything from medical tech, data management, to storytelling tools, to mm-hmm. geotargeting solutions. I mean, it'll be fun for everyone. All at 119 Utah Street, the Mighty Night Club, San Francisco, uh, California. Nice. So, and, and what 
What do you have uh, on on board for any events coming up? Yeah, so we're uh, lucky enough to be a media sponsor at Vel- uh, O'Reilly's Velocity Conference. Um, so Velocity oh. Conference is a three day. Uh, it's three days of concentrated focus on the key aspects of web performance, operations, and mobile performance. So super nerdy, geeky, programmy type of stuff that I love. Optimization, uh, making your site super fast. They got incredible speakers. For more information, go to velocityconf. Dot com. Uh, the, the Velocity Conference 2013 is O'Reilly Conference. is June 18th through 20th of uh, 2013 this year in Santa Clara, California. Santa Clara, California. Again, go to velocityconf.com. All right, Greg, anything else? Oh, another yeah. Event. Got, well, I forgot. Uh, we got another event coming up. Uh, and, and believe it or not, I thought it, I just passed it. But on May 28th at the Hotel Kabuki in uh, San Francisco, Japantown, we got the SF Music Tech Summit. <laughs> I mean, nice. I, these guys are just rolling summits after summits. So, yeah, man. Uh, you know, they got great sponsors, BitTorrent, Dell Radio, um, MailChimp, Claire Ryan, um, you know, just to name a few. And, and it's just going to be another, another, another great event. Awesome. And uh, the Nerd Soccer is going to be there to cover that. Um, I'll Woo-hoo. be there all day covering yeah. that as well. So, so if you guys anyway. want to get more information, Nerd Stalker, you can just go to nerdstalker.com. You'll see all of Greg's awesome work and uh, some of my videos as well and write-ups there. And uh, also check us out on iTunes. Great Subscribe work. to our uh, video and audio or audio podcast. And check out the videos at YouTube. Go to YouTube and do a search for Nerd Stalker TV. That's Nerd Stalker TV. You can also catch us on all the other podcasting stuff, Stitcher and all the other uh, 24 by 7 uh, uh, iBroadcast TV stuff. And uh, Greg, anything else? Did I miss anything? Well, hey, I, I think, well, you covered everything. We got all our all our stuff out. The YouTube channel is going off the hook right now because of all the videos we're posting from Mega Fair. But yeah, anyway, you can catch me at uh, Social Greg on Twitter, at uh, and you can catch me at Social Greg at NerdSoccer.com. And where can we catch you, my friend? All right, so at NerdStalker on Twitter, at a Ferranda, that's me on Twitter, or email me Adolfo at NerdStalker.com. I would love to hear from you. And if you want to uh, contribute to any of the stories, use the hashtag NRDSTK NerdStalker. And uh, we will uh, consider your story. So, uh, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Greg. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for watching and listening, everyone. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Be careful out there.